my evolving relationship with the yoga world and the difference between personal growth and spiritual growth. So I've started recording these videos as a daily challenge to empower my voice and to really trust my voice. So here it goes. Let's see what comes. I'm getting a lot of requests these days, um, as is natural, for when am I going to start doing yoga retreats again? When am I going to start doing yoga teacher trainings again? And I just have to be so blatantly obvious that um, I'm in this totally nebulous, liminal space because I no longer feel confidence in the direction the yoga world is taking the way that I used to. So for me, yoga is an ever after I do. It has changed my life, enhanced my life. And I remember having a spiritual mentor who basically said, yoga is a complete system for awakening. It doesn't need any addendums. And so I really gave myself to yoga in a deep way and found that I was still suffering on some level for whatever reason, it wasn't enough for me. And so I started seeking counseling and working with plant medicines and working with different systems like the Enneagram. I think when you're suffering, you're looking for an alleviation to that suffering and until you feel totally quiet and centered in your mind, you're going to keep seeking. So a lot of the yoga world right now is actually more centered on personal growth and you know, eradicating or working with egoic desires and sufferings than it is on awakening. So the emphasis is more on how can we be, bring blah, 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 blah. how can we live our best life how can we heal from our traumas and grow from our challenges and all of this kind of shadow work and self inquiry is central and and very much a focus of yoga but it's it's really a, the egoic and the mental layer that we're all really working with most of us who identify as yogis in this day and age, we're not uh, ascetic or going to go to a cave for 18 years and meditate on that question, who am I to realize our unity consciousness and simply relax into that. Most of us are trying to figure out the questions of abundance and how to be in healthy, secure relationships and how to live well and love well and have an impact and be in service. And all of these things are totally valid. But as a yoga teacher, I just question whether, you know, going through the anatomy of a downward facing dog is really the path to awakening. It's definitely a step on the path, but I also feel that people can tend to over-identify with those earlier stages of yoga and get lost on the path. I've made my career out of being a yoga teacher and a yoga teacher trainer and a yoga retreat leader. And it's been so confusing for me these past couple of years of closing the school and establishing what is the direction I want to go in. Because as a yoga teacher in the world, Unfortunately, I found that in most cases, working for most other studios, the work isn't really valued. It's a very replaceable position like um, and more of like an aerobics instructor type of thing. What's being valued is not the life experience, wisdom, even teaching experience that we carry. And as a teacher trainer in during the pandemic, I was making so little and I was training other people to take my job in a way. I mean, I, I didn't want to look at it in that sense, but when you break it down to numbers, it was very disillusioning because, is that a word? Disilluding? Because you know, a lot of these new yoga teachers had maybe gone to one to 10 classes and then decided that, okay, I'm going to take a yoga teacher training because I want to deepen my practice. And then, you know, they're happy to super work for free, which of course I encourage you to get as much experience as you can. But a lot of, a lot of these sort of new yoga teachers or, or new people on the path of yoga becoming 
identified with their new role as a yoga teacher and positioning them and marketing themselves on Instagram and having these huge followings and people really seeing that these are the new leaders and the new mentors when they have very little experience of actually doing self work and shadow work and really integrating that into their daily lives and are right away kind of going into the world and positioning themselves as master level teachers because they've done a 200 training or maybe they've done three 200 hour trainings in their journey of being a yogi for one and a half years. So, so I just don't know what my relationship is to yoga anymore. I'm cultivating my practice on a daily level, but the direction that the world is going is that it's kind of mass producing yoga teachers. For every yoga teacher out there, there are three people training to be yoga teachers. And then one area that I'm finding a lot of lack in is this integration piece of people actually maintaining their own practice, going deeper in their own practice, valuing what they're offering. So when am I going to offer retreats and trainings again? I'll let you know. In the meantime, I'm offering mentorships because what I'm seeing is needed in the world is that these people who are newer to the path of teaching need guidance, need people who've had a little bit more experience than they do to guide them into how to integrate a yogic lifestyle into their day-to-day -day existence and how to keep inquiring. Ultimately, these are just conversations in yoga and we need to keep on having them until the day that we leave this body. This quality of curiosity and inquiry is so essential to this path of spiritual growth and awakening just as much as it is a path to our you know, personal growth and egoic refinement. So those are some of my two cents today. I am working with people one-on-one -on -one in mentorships to help take you to that next level of exceptional teacher, teacher so that you can move from having that feeling of being an imposter to really embodying the yogi that you can be, if that resonates. Hope you have a beautiful day wherever you are and sending you so much love.